So what they said happened was you, that I drank a fifth of vodka. It was as if I drank a fifth of vodka in 30 minutes. Wow. Pretty intense. Now, here's how I woke up. Yeah. Because that's kind of interesting. So I woke up and it's white, everything's white. Yeah. Right? And three doctors came rushing to my bedside. They were singing to me, they were singing. He's alive, he's alive, you know, yeah. three times, right? And then they come flying over. Yeah. And how old are you at this time? In that right? moment, I was what? I wasn't even 20 yet. I was like 19, 19 or 20. 19 or 20, but I wasn't 21. I was underage. <laughs> so my my pledge brothers just dumped me off at the school, the school nurse or whatever, like that. The, they didn't have a school hospital. <laughs> they had right. to ship me 15 minutes down the road to Grove City Hospital. Jeez, man. And I woke up down there and like, do you know where you're at? And I'm like, oh, I'm Slippery Rock. Medical center, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And, but, well, what happened the night before, I'd found out that they just dumped me off because they don't want to be responsible Damn. for it. Yeah, talk about brotherhood, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm glad they did that because if they didn't, like, so my big, my uh, pledge master, he was studying anatomy, physiology. He knew symptoms in the body. Right. Apparently, we went from that house to another house. And I was just, I mean, I was like blacking out. Yeah, of course. I was, I mean, some gnarly stuff, right? I mean, yeah. when you drink that much alcohol that fast, you know. Not good stuff happens. Not cool, yeah. right? Not so good stuff. Um, so when I woke up, you know, the guy, the doctor comes over. He he looks at me and he goes, you know, he's like, hey, you know. And then he goes, son, you're a living miracle. In my 30 years of being a doctor, I've never seen anyone with your severe condition live, yet alone be able to comprehend what I'm saying. Wow. So it was alcohol poisoning too, huh? So it was. Wow. So my blood alcohol level was 0.39, <sighs> which 0.4, I was dead. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you wake up and then immediately what's going through your mind at that time? At that time, what was going through my mind was let's get this catheter out of me. Yeah. <laughs> because it was plugged, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my initial thought was like, whoa, what's going on here? You're right. Yeah. Uh, the other thought was. Um, Did they call your parents or anything? Or? My parents had shown up. They called my parents the night before. Oh, okay. And they had to actually told my parents that I was going to die or be brain dead for life. Like that was the phone call. <sighs> your son's going to die. Or we burned it for life. So of course they rush over. So they got up and they 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 immediately prayed. Yeah. You know, they prayed for my healing. They got up and they drove six hours across the country, across wow. the state, really. Yeah. Um, and then they ended up getting there in the morning. I woke up about 8 30. And of course, that whole six hours, their hearts trembling for their son. Oh, yeah. What happened? Of course, yeah. Wow. Yep. Yep. So when you wake up, are they there? They were there, actually. Um, they were there, my aunt was there. Um, they came in obviously after the doctors were like, did their whole thing. Wow, and then I know that you have shared a lot of times that that was the moment where you sort of reevaluated your life, how serious you took everything. Talk to me about the series of you know days and weeks after that. You know, what was different in your mind? What were the priorities that shifted? What was the mental dialogue? Because I'm sure it gave a whole new meaning to life, faith, business, everything, right? Yeah, so the biggest thing for me was who I was spending my time with, right? So what happened was the doctor said, listen, like, I've never seen anyone with your severe condition live, let alone be able to comprehend what I'm saying right now. And he said, there is no other explanation. God must have a plan and purpose for your life. Like, that's it. So my dad, he came in, he was talking to me, and he was like, listen, I think this is a sign. God has a plan for you. So we're driving home, or I'm driving back to campus. My car was like towed, and I was missing my <laughs> wallet. Like, I had nothing. Yeah, like, yeah. I'd lost everything. Not else. in a good situation. Here, Not in a good yeah. situation. But like this little church on the side of the road. Now you gotta remember, like Slippery Rock University is in the sticks as, as well. Right, yeah. I mean, it's like just pure farmland. And this little hole in the wall church, I mean, this thing probably couldn't even fit 100 people in it. Like yeah. it was small, <laughs> right? Yeah. Little sign, it's like totally what you see in the movies, right? And it said, God has a plan and purpose for your life. Wow, that's what the sign that's said. That's what the sign said. Yeah, talking about dad's God sending like, you a sign. <laughs> my dad's like, I think that sign's for you too, <laughs> right? Yeah. So. At that moment, I went back and I was really, you know, just kind of thinking about like my life, you know, like being, I was in a great, yeah. Let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, obviously your, your family is a family of faith. Were you spiritually practicing at the time or was your faith a little bit weak during it that time? It was a little period? weak. So we grew up Catholic. Okay. We actually grew up Catholic and um, kind of going into the backstory, that, there's a whole backstory to that one. Um, but our faith changed. I was always pulled spiritually. I remember when I was in middle school, I actually went to church on my own. It was a Lutheran church. Oh, wow. And I, I found that to be interesting um, uh, uh, that I did that, but I, pull, I pulled my buddy. Uh, my buddy the, uh, we lived in a neighborhood with a lot of uh, kids our age. 
And I, me and my, one of my best friends at the time, like we went to the Lutheran church and I actually ended up pulling my parents to the church, which is interesting oh, that wow. I was pulled at such a young age to seek spiritual things because usually it's the parents that want to yeah. take the kids to church, right? Right. But it was me. So, but growing up, I was Catholic. We went to church, you know, Easter and Christmas, and that was about it. Right. You oh, know? wow. And it's because of what my parents experienced in the Catholic church growing up. My dad went to a Catholic school. He got beat by the Catholic church. Like when he was out of order, they really? would smack him with real rulers. Yeah. I mean, anybody who's a little bit older that has been to Catholic schools will have had a story most of the time. But that was a dominant culture. That right? was yeah. the culture. That was like the thing that they did. Like if you get out of, get out of hand, they'll, they'll smack you with a ruler or they'll do something like that, right? Yeah. So growing up, and then my mom had us, you know, she grew up in a scenario where she had something bad happen to her. And um, she believed that because that had happened to her, that she was going to hell. Like she was doomed. Yeah. So growing up, like, it was kind of like, yeah, church is there. We go Christmas and we go on Easter because that's what everyone does. But they were far, like growing up until my teenage years, it wasn't until I was like 15 years of age that we came to faith. Wow, and it as was a family. A vi- as a family. But it was, it was first, it, like what all triggered that whole thing, like our shift in our faith and our belief was when my dad was driving down the road one day and he heard loud as if someone was yelling in the back of his car, seek God. Wow. Like he was just, he was driving home from work and he felt like someone was in the back, back of the seat yelling, seek God. And he wow. like immediately pulled over. And like that was the, the defining moment for him to start seeking. And then that kind of wow. had a trickle effect. I love that. Wow. Okay. So then take us back to, you know, you wake up from the hospital, you reevaluate everything in the days and weeks after that. What's different? You know, you say who you surround yourself with was number one. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I knew I needed to surround myself with people with different values. Rather than the fraternity brothers. Rather than the fraternity guys. Yeah. Right. And (laughs) the liquor, um, kind of, so the liquor control board actually came in, and the very next week I was interviewed by the school. Oh, man. What happened was the the fraternity hazing started at the, you know, in the fraternities they have like the parents, like the elders. Of course, yeah, yeah. Well, the elder actually also happened to run the school library. (laughs) <laughs> and that was yeah. a liability. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So within two Conflict weeks, of he was or... gone. Yeah. He he you know he he got let go from that. Wow. And the fraternity got shut down for the whole next year. So there was a bit of friction between me. <laughs> Brian messed it up for everybody and yeah. the rest of the guys. Yeah. Yeah. So I knew like I needed to get out of there. Like yeah. it was it was compounded. Yeah. And so I applied to like seven different schools. Yeah. And I got up, I got accepted into all of them, and I ended up transferring um, down to a school in Florida, in Clearwater, Florida. Um, a Christian school, Christian college, um, and just, I just realized that I needed to get my path. I needed to get my life on a better path with different people who had different values yeah. than the one I was in. Mm, interesting. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. And if you love this video, be sure to leave a comment. Tell me your top three takeaways or top takeaway from today's video. And if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe so you can get notified every time that we upload a new video here on YouTube. And before you go, make sure you grab your free golden ticket. This free golden ticket is loaded with our seven figure and our eight figure expert agency and e-commerce funnels, emails, and scripts that we've used to build multi-million dollar businesses in a variety of different markets. So thank you again for watching this video. Hope you got massive value from it. And I look forward to hearing what your takeaway was from this video. And also, I look forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos that we will be releasing.